What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about today. Some MVPs finally got on the board with their first home run. Judgey, he went yard. Shohei, same thing. Joe Musgrove, he basically just called out Josh Hader, and he didn't even really try to hide it. The A's are officially leaving Oakland after the 2024 season. Today marks a sad day in baseball history, and Chris Bryant, he finally got on the board with his first hit of the year. Now, before we get into the highlights, a quick shout out to all of you guys. You've been supporting MLB recap like crazy. We are so close to 500,000 subscribers, so join the team. Thank you. And just a reminder, Recap is presented by SeatGeek. Use code FUZZY to save 20 bucks off your tickets. And if you like daily fantasy sports, right now on Underdog Fantasy, they are running a new customer special. If you use my code FUZZY, they will match your first deposit up to $100. I've been playing it every single day with my buddies. Underdog Fantasy, it's a lot of fun. Now, before we talk about the MLB games, I gotta talk about the Orioles AAA team because they could probably score more than half of teams in Major League Baseball. Their first five hitters combined for 20 hits and 20 23 RBIs. Jackson Holiday had a home run. He got on base six times. Heston Kirstad, he had 10 RBIs. The Orioles, they could bolster their rotation at any moment because they have so many prospects to trade, even though they're probably not going to trade any of them. Staying with AAA, the A's are officially moving after this offseason, but not to Vegas, to Sacramento. They'll be playing in the home of the Rivercats, the Giants AAA team. They'll be there from 2025 to 2027, possibly 2028. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the A's fans are losing their fan base. The the actual players are playing in a worse stadium than their own AAA team. Like the Aviators, their ballpark is world class. What's happening to the A's is just absolutely diabolical. Now, since we just talked about them, how did the A's fare yesterday? Well, that sack fly in the fourth inning was the only run scored for both teams. Pavetta and Stripling, they were both on top of their game. Pavetta, he got some help from Rafaela in center field. He can go get it with the best of them. Now, Pavetta is going to need some more help from his defense, and he gets it. Pavetta is a maniac. He is so much fun to watch. He was yelling, come on! Come on. And then he fist pumps when that double play is eventually turned. Jaron Duran went four for four in this game. He has seven hits in his last two games. He flew around a third on a Devers double. Somehow Devers got that to go through the hole at third base. And then he karate kicked into second. The bases are juiced. Oakland, they get out of it. So it's still one to nothing. But like I mentioned, there was only one run scored because Chris Martin, he got Seth Brown to chase. Deja vu happened. Kenley, he has two runners on. He's got to pull a Chris Martin. And he gets that lefty to chase. Ryan Noda, he's been pretty bad to start the season. Unfortunately, the Oakland A's get swept. And shout out to the Boston pitching staff. They have a 1.54 ERA as a team with 77 strikeouts over 64 innings. Corbin Burns was on the bump for his second start. And this ended up being the world's longest pickle, it felt like. It gave Vinny Pascantino time to get all the way to third base. And he scores after Salvi blooped in a single. So good for Bobby. He stayed in the pickle long enough to get Vinny all the way to third. Salvi got to Corbin Burns again in the third. This time, Bobby does score without issue. So Corbin allows you just two runs on the day. His offense was getting smothered. We'll show that in a second. Look at Michael Garcia. He had four home runs in 120 plus games last year. That's his third already of the first, what, two weeks of the season. Kansas City put Cole Reagans up by three and Cole, he's been a cheat code ever since that Aroldis Chapman trade. He could have been on the Rangers, which would have made the Rangers almost unfair. He went six and a third shutout. One base hit allowed with seven strikeouts. He has a 2.4 ERA and 105 strikeouts since the trade in 84 innings. Baltimore, they couldn't be happier that he left and they started a rally pretty much instantly. Gunner got their first run on a sack fly and Ali Rutschman, he made it a one run game on a double to right field. Wait, that's not a double. It's the year 2024. You should know not to run on Hunter Renfro. I don't care if he's going back on the ball and has to spin and do a plie. He's going to nab you. That ends the eighth and Baltimore, they brushed it off. The bases are loaded in the ninth and James McCann, he ripped one in the shortstop and third base gap to score. Mullins, he flies around and that is a game winning run. There you go. I think it only makes sense to find the team who the Orioles forced into a team meeting after two games. The Angels, they have not lost since that 11-3 bludgeoning by the Orioles. Taylor Ward, he blooped in their first run. Drury, he was able to turn on the Jets. I put that in air quotes because he's not that fast, but he does beat out the double play for another RBI. He scores Mike Trout. Drury got some help in the third to score after Vidal Brujan couldn't field it. Miami, they had his back though. The trade pieces from last year's trade deadline came in clutch with Josh Bell and Jake Berger. They both knocked in a few. So it's four to Marlins and Tim Anderson. Did, did he just pull a Jeter? It wasn't as smooth, but that was still a really nice play. That was the final highlight of the night for the Marlins. I hate to break it to you guys. That team meeting really did something for the Angels. Maybe the Marlins need one. Ohapi, an RBI single. Adele, he's been putting the ball in play a little bit more. There's a sack fly. The bases are now loaded for the Floridian. I'm pretty sure that Zach Neto is from Florida. I don't know how that ball didn't leave, but that's a long two-run double. He makes it eight to two. His family was there. Same with Nolan Shanuel's family. I think they're both from Florida. That is a sack fly. And Taylor Ward is so big. 
back-to-back -back eight RBIs, three home runs already. He struggled after Alec Manoa hit him in the face. I think anyone would struggle because that's just terrifying. So it's really cool to see him raking. The Angels, they won four in a row, while the Marlins are the first team since the Twins in 2016 to start 0-7. The Halos might be clicking, so let's go find some other AL West teams and see if they can keep up. Texas, they're taking on the Rays. Isaac Paredes, he made a slick little play at third base to end a base load of threat in the second. Aaron Savali, he at one point set down seven consecutive Rangers when the all-time dangerous Corey Seager, he connected on his first of the year. The Rays, they couldn't afford that because Nathan Avaldi was stingy all night long. He went the first six innings without allowing a single run. He went back out for the seventh and the dude literally had ice in his veins. He struck out the side in the seventh. Do you know how rare that is? Because modern day pitching, we promote bullpens. You don't really go seven innings or, I mean, you don't strike out the side in the seventh inning. Now, as soon as he came out, that's when things got scary. Two runners got on for Ahmed Rosario, who, in my opinion, just absolutely stinks. I know I've been joking around that he can be Sammy Sosa on the Rays, but I don't think that you can fix this guy. Zeke Duran makes a web gem to rob Ahmed Rosario, so maybe I'm being too harsh, but Ahmed is now three for 18 on the year. Josh Smith, a nice little compact swing. He drives in two. He ends up at third, and then he scored on a rocket off the bat of Marcus Simeon. I don't know if I can blame Caballero because, again, that thing was scorched. Now, to their credit, the Rays made things interesting again, but to no avail, the Rangers, they win the series. Listen, I wanted to talk about the Astros after the Rangers because I wanted to keep the AL West theme going, but seeing Ahmed Rosario fired me up to talk about the Guardians because without him and Miles Straw in the lineup every single day, this team is legit. Like, maybe I'm a delusional fanboy, but you saw Stephen Kwan single. He scores on a long double from J-Ram. Cleveland, they did get some help from Seattle's defense. They couldn't field anything cleanly. Naylor, an RBI ground out. Will Brennan, he smoked an RBI single. Again, couldn't field it because it was hit pretty hard. Cleveland, they got it going again. Andres, a big two-run double. He's already up to four doubles, which leads the league. Josh Naylor, a sack fly. Get used to that. Great throw, but Stephen Kwan, he was fast enough to beat that tag. And is this the year? Is this the year that J-Ram secures his first MVP? He's been top six five times already, even if he doesn't. He's finally got some help. He doesn't have to be Hercules this year. Josh Naylor drove in his third RBI on a sack fly. Will Brennan has been crushing the ball, but it's been straight to someone pretty much every single time. He put on a lot of muscle, and his average exit velocity is up six miles an hour. Back-to-back -back games against the Mariners with 10 hits off of their starters, which when that comes against Luis Castillo and George Curry, that sounds impossible. Logan Allen pulled a Nathan Ovaldi. He got better as the game went on. He struck out the first two in the seventh inning, but they wouldn't let him go a full seven. Six and two-thirds shutout is still very impressive. Cleveland, their third in runs scored and fourth in Team ERA. Now, right behind them in ERA are the Astros and the Yankees, so let's see what they did yesterday. Jordan, he's got to contact the hospital where Chris Bassett was born. Update that dude's birth certificate because Jordan is Chris's daddy. He singled in the first, then he homered a few innings later. His fifth home run in like 17 at-bats versus Chris Bassett, and it didn't get much better because Jordan smoked a double down the line. He went up to Jordan after that inning ended, and he said, you're effing killing me, man. That was a lot of fun to watch. Javier, he looked great again. Five shutout, but because he had five walks to kind of force them into a short outing, he struck out Vladdy. Zero runs through 11 innings for Christian Javier. He is back. Nate Pearson was going to try and stop the bleeding, but uh, he couldn't. McCormick, he singled in Bregman. Jamie Pena somehow got his hands inside on that pitch. Maybe he's back. That was off the very middle of the bat, and that right there is what we call catching a barrel. Jordan's second of the night, number 44, went four for four. Payne launched one too. He went nearly 400 at bats without a home run. He has two in the last few games. He's hitting 400 with six RBIs. He did not look right last year, but he's starting hot this year. Look at the future Hall of Famer go. Altuve has three home runs. He's now hitting 315 with 20 home runs and 14 stolen bases over his last 97 games. Jordan, he barely missed his third of the night, but the Strohs, they pummeled the Jays again. They went eight to nothing. Cattell Marte has been useless against Rodon for his career, but right there, he smoked a double. He was one for 15. Now he's two for 16 after that double. That's his 1,000th career hit. And there's career home run number one for the rookie, Blaze Alexander. He hit 400 in spring. Right now he's hitting 417. That's 100% unsustainable, but the kid can clearly rake. Um, He just can't rake like this guy, though. It was only a matter of time before Judge he went yard. A little too much of the plate on that sinker from Merrill Kelly. A two-run bomb for Judge. Cattell said, gimme. He got those runs right back on a monster two-run perfect, perfect blast. And there's another long ball for a two-run home run. Verdugo, that's his first as a Yankee. Yes, that was in the 10th inning. New York, they're up by two. They're looking prime for a W, but the Snakes had other plans in mind. Perdomo, he put in play, and Volpe could not make it happen. I think Perdomo tweaked his knee or something on that play. He had to come out. Corbin, his blazing speed ties it. Can't really blame Volpe on that one. The Yankees ended up getting two runners on for Soto, and maybe seeing Soto made the pitcher nervous because that is a go-ahead balk. Judge, he then finds a gap. He doubles for his third RBI of the day. The Yankees, again, they're looking prime for a W. Jace Peterson struck out. 
But then Jorge Barrosa, he blooped in Arizona's fifth run, so it's back to a one-run game. Booney then intentionally walked Moreno because that brought up Scott McGuff, a relief pitcher. They had no more bench hitters, and he struck out to end it. From one AL MVP to another, only this other MVP is now on an NL team, talking about Otani and the Dodgers. So we got San Francisco versus LA. Both teams, they traded runs early as Patrick Bailey answered LA's run with a no-doubter, his first of the year. The score didn't stay tied for long as Otani showed off his fifth tool, the speed tool. He legs out a single, then scored all the way from first. Will Smith, he's got to love hitting fourth behind Betts. Otani and Freeman. What the heck is that? Teoscar dropped in a base hit as well. He scored Will Smith and Miguel Rojas. He has been a different dude since the Dodgers traded for Ahmed Rosario. Like, obviously, Ahmed is now with the Rays, but Miguel, his job was threatened and he stepped up. He's been pretty good. Conforto, he's apparently back to Mets Conforto. Those two RBIs give him nine RBIs. He's hitting 370. Sheesh. And I'm going to say sheesh one more time. Sheesh. Because that swing deserves it. Otani went 430 for his first tater of the year, his first as a Dodger. He had seeds tossed in his face. The Dodgers have some interesting celebrations, to say the least. Good thing he hit that because Soler, back to back games with the home run, 452 feet. Good lord. LA, they're using their voodoo magic again to save a player. Dennison Lamette, he went from a two ERA and almost winning a Cy Young in 2020 to the worst pitcher in baseball. He had two strikeouts and he got the save. So that one ended with a 5 4 box score. This next one ended up being 98, but this one was even more of a roller coaster game. The Cubs got some runs on sack flies from Michael Bush and Miguel Amaya and in steps the mighty Seiya Suzuki. Poor Cal Quantrill. Seiya has been seeing beach balls for a while. After that two run single, Seiya said see ya. He's hitting 335 with 14 home runs and 40 RBIs over his last 60 games dating back to last year. Those are road to the show numbers. So it's 5 nothing Cubs. When the former Cub, Chris Bryant, snapped his 0 for 28 streak, 0 for 18 to start this year, 0 for 10 to end 2023. The Cubs are going to steal back some runs though. Miguel Amaya was able to muscle that into the outfield. Three ended up scoring because the Rockies, they play some terrible defense. I'm sure the weather had nothing to do with it. It definitely did, though. It was raining like crazy. It was also really cold. The Cubs, this game's for sure over, right? Right? Charlie Blackman, there's a double. It's not going to really start anything. But wait, the Rockies broke out an inning later. Jay Cavey hit the gap for an RBI double. Chuck Nasty he used Mother Nature to his aid. I'm telling you, the ball was slick. Two more runs score for the Rockies. Tovar connects. Is he going to drop? Talkman cannot get there. It is a tie ball game. Just kind of extended the inevitable though because the Cubs got the lead back and they were not going to give it away. They traded drops. Tovar dropped one in and Colorado's catcher dropped it after Seiya put it in play. It was a fun game though as the Cubs, they win 9-8. This next game was also pretty fun, just not 9-8 in the cold and rain fun. It was bring your dog to the park day. San Diego they loaded the bases and Profar, he let starting pitcher Zach Thompson do the rest. He takes ball four. He's handed a free bases out of RBI. Tatis, he laid down RBI fielder's choice. He avoids a double play. By the way, Fernando Tatis, he's on pace for 50 plus home runs and 30 plus stolen bases. Just throwing that out there because you guys know I'm a Tatis fanboy. Arnado likes hitting in Petco. He grabbed an RBI single off of Musgrove. More on Musgrove in just a sec. Actually, let's talk about him right now. Musgrove's battery mate, Kyle Higashioka, he had his pitchers back, his first as a Padre. The defense had Joe's back as well. That double play ends the fifth inning. Musgrove, he bounced back in a big way. Seven strikeouts, one run over six innings. He can be really good when he's right. Wandy Peralta was not right at all. He hit two hitters and that set up a nightmare inning. A throwing error, the run scores, and that's a rally killer. No throwing error on that one. Nolan bounces into a double play. That's a ball game. Robert Suarez, he threw 98 miles an hour past Victor Scott on the paint. And then after the game, Musgrove was quoted saying, having a closer that you can go out there and rely on for more than just three outs is huge to us here. He's always willing to take the ball, and we're grateful for it. Basically, he called out Josh Hader because Hader refused to come in for four outs last year. He said, that's not me. I haven't gotten four outs in a long time. And he legitimately refused to come into the game when they needed him the most. But Robert Suarez, he said, I'm your guy. Pittsburgh is going to see if they can move to a perfect 6-0. And it started off well for them. There was a double from Jackson Winsky. Andrew McCutcheon got on. And the former National hurt them again. Michael A. Taylor, he hits the ball hard. And that is a hard two-run double. Oh my, my, my friend, Joey Gallo hit one 450 feet. I haven't been able to say that once this year, my friend. That's his first hit of 2024. He started off 0 for 12. Washington, they kept it going. Luis Garcia tied it on a double. CJ Abrams, he played it two more on a single. He's looking really, really good so far. Sawinski, he homered to kind of shift the momentum, but Washington, they stole that run right back. Ildemero Vargas, he doubled in Luis Garcia, and that's pretty much a wrap. Brian Reynolds, he got hosed on a check swing, and he's not happy. Shelton got a 
ejected. He got his money's worth, and by the way, in my opinion, Reynolds did swing, though. Finnegan, he struck out Taylor for the game's final run. Pittsburgh will not be going 162-0. and Man, the weather on the East Coast looks just straight miserable. The Reds and the Phillies game got delayed like six or seven hours or something like that. Wheeler, he struck out a few early, and Frankie Montas, he was dicing as well. He got JT looking silly. Frankie is going to go up by one after his buddy Christian Encarnacion Strand got a poorly located sinker. He belted an RBI double. Montas, he's still out there dicing. That is a blistering fastball to end the fifth inning. Ellie, he stepped in with two strikeouts and two at-bats. He reversed that real quick. He clutched up for an RBI double, and he's actually got an 11-game hit streak dating back to last year. So it's 3 nothing Reds, all off Wheeler, but at least he had doubled in his strikeouts. He had 10. Skinny Schwarber keeps on mashing, and maybe the Phillies can get back into it. Montas, he straight lost his command. He loaded the bases up, and Justin Wilson, who has been in and out of the league with injuries, he used to be really, really good. He got a chance, and he got Marsh to extend his hands, weekly pop up to end the threat. Martini, he drove in the game's final run as the Reds steal the series. They're 4-2, and two, and the Phillies, they're 2-4. and four. The final game before we show the Web Gems, Hoskins, his negative 5 speed stopped him from an RBI fielder's choice, so he's going to get thrown out, but stay tuned. Reese, he was not going to need any speed in just a second. Milwaukee, they got a run on a Bryce Terang sack fly, and the newcomer Joey Ortiz, he saved them with a nifty play at third base. Replay did confirm that Manuel Margot was out, so the inning is over, and I tried to tell you. Reese, he doesn't need any speed. He can trot around at his leisure. That was his second home run of the year. Minnesota and Milwaukee, they traded runs. Minnesota on a little fielder's choice from Carlos Santana. Milwaukee on the first big fly from 20-year-old Jackson Chorio. He's hitting 350 with really good defense. He looks like he's going to be a megastar, like a kind of Byron Buxton type player. Speed, power, defense. And there's Buxton. He drove in an RBI on an extra base hit right before Correa tied it at 3-3. Carlos, he's really got to bounce back. Jeffers, he had a big game. Finally, he was 0 for 13. That is a huge three-run home run. And then to end the game, he had an RBI single. He had 14 home runs and a 135 OPS plus in 2023. So it was only a matter of time before he broke out. Steven O'Kurt, he got all three outs via the strikeout. Minnesota hands the Brewers their first L of the season. So the only remaining undefeated team is the Detroit Tigers. So that does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. And if you're brand new, hit subscribe. And of course, enjoy the web gems. Swinging a fly ball down the left field line. Long run, Guriel, and he will slide and make the catch. And a ground ball in the hole. Diving stop. Quick release. Does he have enough on it? Wow. Yes, sir. Hayes might have a play on this. To the tarp. What a play by. Line drive, one hopper. Flag down by Stott from his knees to second for one over to first, not in top. In the air, very, very shallow left field, and Varsho's got it.